Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit more about resonance stabilization of radicals. In the last video, I mentioned that resonance is one way that radicals can be further stabilized. Uh, and I've made reference to the allyl radical as a particular example. Uh, unlike ions, so cations and anions, where there are multiple different ways that you can uh, have resonance stabilization, the allyl resonance stabilization, in other words, being stabilized by nearby double bonds uh, is perhaps the most important type of resonance stabilization for radicals. And so here I have a allyl radical and its most important resonance contributor. And just like for ionic species, we can draw arrows that represent how the uh, how, or, or how these two things would interconvert. And of course, we have to remember that resonance structures aren't actually switching back and forth in time, but the understanding the flow of electrons is conceptually helpful to us. We don't like that. Delete this arrow, there we go. So we can use uh, arrows to represent the motion of, or to represent how a resonance structure might be, or how one resonance structure might contribute or, or convert into another. And we're gonna use the same kind of arrows when we draw radical mechanisms in a few videos. And as you look at what it is that I've just drawn here, you might immediately see something different and the type of arrow that was drawn. Radical mechanisms and radical resonance structures use single hook arrows or, or sometimes called fish hook arrows because they actually look like fish hooks. The This is in contrast to the type of arrow used for a tool or for, for an ionic process. You know, this is a double hook arrow. So this arrow has two hooks. Right? And it turns out that this is this is not random, this is well thought out. that the number of hooks on the arrow is equal to the number of electrons that are moving. So in radical processes, and I want to bring my uh, arrows down a bit so I can, I can put in the word radical here. Uh, radical processes, we are talking often about single electron moving. In ionic or, or, or polar processes, which is the type you're more familiar with, we have two electrons. Or, or electron pairs that we're talking about. And then I have a typo down here in my word double, so let's go, let me fix that, that's embarrassing. Okay. Right. And then I can likewise draw arrows to get me back to my original structure. Um, so let's let's see. Here we go. We're gonna. And the way that we do this is, you know, we take our radical. This radical is going to be one electron out of two that is being used to form the pi bond. The other part of that pi bond is going to be one electron. It's in the, the shown pi bond. And then the other electron in that pi bond is going to become the unpaired electron on the other carbon atom. This allyl radical uh, resonance pattern is actually really similar to the resonance pattern for allyl cations. Let me 
if you remember from allocations, the, the resonance pattern for allocations is that the double bond moves to, you know, the double bond moves towards the cation and the cation ends up at the opposite spot of the three carbon allyl system. And likewise for the allyl anion, uh, you get a similar uh, movement uh, of electrons in, in the system. In the next video, I'm going to do a couple of examples of, uh, of, of using this information about radical stability to identify weakest uh, or the weakest CH bonds in a molecule or where the most stable radical might be formed, uh, and also to practice drawing resonance structures of uh, resonance stabilized radicals. Thank you for watching.